good morning to everyone inside the sanctuary, over the live stream. This is a wonderful opportunity to come to the house of God to worship. It may be chilly on the inside, it may be chilly on the outside, but the Holy Spirit is always warming us up into the presence of God. So as we prepare for dynamic worship, let us now stand, if you can, please, for the light of Christ. pray. Lord, we welcome the power of your presence. God, we ask you to touch each heart and mind over the live stream and as well as in this sanctuary. God, we pray that we have open hearts and minds to receive a message from you. God, we love you. We worship you. We magnify you. We thank you, God. For this is the day that you have made. Thank you, great God, for allowing us to be part of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now hear great words from the music ministry as they come and sing as we glorify God. The living God falls fresh. On me. Can we sing it one more time all over the building? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall. Does it melt me? One more time, all over the building. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. celebrate God in this place. Say good morning to the Holy Spirit this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus in a mighty way today. If you recognize this song, I want you to feel free. We're going to have some space for you up here if you want to come up and sing. We can dance. We can make sure that we give a joyful Lord, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Sister Judith McAllister. Hallelujah. Go ahead and start the track. Ah, uh, he says worthy. 
for he is good. How many of you know the song, Oh, Give Thanks, to the Lord? If you do, and you want to come up, I want you to step right here. I'm going to hand your mic. Come on. I know some of you know it.
We're going to slow things down for a minute. want to bless the heart of God. As we prepare for Thanksgiving, we want to approach God with a thankful heart. Yeah. With a thankful heart. There's a song that says, give thanks with a grateful heart to give thanks. See if we can start that again. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God in this place. The enemy has no control in this service. He has no control. That's all right. Bless God. Hmm. You know what? Musicians, if you caught that key. we can do better than that. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. 
Well, we, you've already been welcomed. God, I hope, has been pleased with the service that we are rendering to him. So let's get moving with the next part of our service. It's time for our morning announcements, which shall be lifted by Sister Natasha Polk. Receive her, please. Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for. Oh, I'm thankful for you, my church family. The online worshipers, I'm thankful for you as well. There is so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful that Sister Earlene is back in the house Amen. today. So yeah. Raise your hand, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, thank you. Hallelujah, she's still pressing through, but she is here. I'm thankful for that. I'm also thankful for, and many of us may not know, but Sister Joanne, uh, the young lady who joined a couple of Sundays ago and her children, her mom was rushed to the hospital a couple of days ago. Um, well, actually, yeah, it was a couple of days ago, and uh, we were praying with her, and she said, the doctor said this. The pastor was on the line. I tell you, we got a praying pastor, y'all. Yes, and I thank God for him. And she said, we're not going to worry about what those doctors said because the doctor said something, and she was nervous and, and, and just a little concerned. I mean, she has faith, but she was a little shaken. When You know how when somebody tells you something, kind of, you know, makes you shake a little bit? But after that powerful prayer that pastor prayed, she said, I feel so much better. And then she could go on. Well, Joanne called me this morning and said, Mom is doing much better. The procedure went well. She said that they're moving her out of ICU this morning into a regular room. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. We're thankful. Hallelujah. So let's continue to just be thankful. God is in the blessing business. Amen? Amen. All right. So our upcoming happenings at the Haven, please follow along if you would like to in the worship guide, our November birthdays. Glen Haven would like to wish all our November birthday celebrants a very happy birthday. We have Roy Anderson the second on the second, Mercy Adjaman on the ninth, Maureen Russell on the tenth, Joan Miller the eighteenth. Hers was yesterday. Roosevelt uh, Roy or uh, R.J. actually the fourth on the eighteenth. Natasha Polk on the twenty-first, Apokia Adjaman on the twenty-sixth, and Shireen Wortham on the thirtieth. So treats will be served next Sunday, which is fourth Sunday, in honor of our celebrants. So please make sure you come back. We had a wonderful time yesterday serving the community. Let's give God some glory. Hallelujah. Our annual Thanksgiving basket drive. We want to thank everyone who participated, who prayed, who donated, who uh, was out there uh, passing out the turkeys. We appreciate the men because I know I couldn't lift all those turkeys and the boxes and all. So we really appreciate you as well. And Pastor would like to send a special thank you as well. He was uh, away on church business uh, in Athens on yesterday, and he'll probably share with us a little bit what's going on in the, dish, in, in the conference. But uh, God left us, and Pastor, you left it, everything in good hands. Because raise your hand if you were there yesterday with the turkeys. Jonathan, uh, Yolanda, Jesse, David. Uh, Brother Mike. Back from back, back. Yeah, Jesse. Okay, got Jesse. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also, we uh, have a little friend from across the street. Her name is Nikosha. She comes across the street when she sees us doing something. We got to do more in the community. Amen. 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 We'll talk about that later. But she came over. She wiped down the frost off the turkeys, and she was putting labels on the bas on the baskets and all. So. Uh, it was such a wonderful time in the Lord. So thank you all for everything that you did for the community. Please remember that what you do for Christ will last. Amen? So Pastor, Sister Rosalind, and the whole outreach team would like to thank you. Also, we have our community outreach clothing closet and food distribution. That's December 9th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. A.m. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you have any gently worn clothes, jackets, or shoes, uh, or coats, please uh, bring them into the church house, and uh, we will get them prepared 
to be uh, given out to the community on December 9th. And please know that coffee and cocoa will be served to the community as well. Amen? Amen. We have our weekly and monthly happenings at the Haven. Please know that Wednesday night Bible study and Friday night prayer are uh, postponed until the 29th, Wednesday the 29th. There's a lot going on with family and outreach, so please enjoy your families, and we'll see you online at Zoom on the 29th. Amen? Intercessory prayer is every first Saturday of the month at 11 a.m. in the prayer room. And today is our sharing Saturday. Can you smell the coffee, everyone? Yes, it smells great. And we also have cocoa and tea. We have peppermint tea and also green tea back there for those who are not coffee drinkers. Oh, I'm sorry, I was Christ and coffee. We already said our sharing Saturday. But today is Christ and coffee. And please, when you feel the need to go back and warm up, please make sure that you go back there uh, and enjoy your beverage here in the sanctuary. And then we also, we have our men's group, Manhood and God's Hood Ministry. We, they meet on third and fifth Saturdays at 10 a.m. And as always, we're in church-wide intercessory prayer. Please continue to pray for the list here, but also our church-wide list uh, that Pastor has. That's Brother Teddy, Sister Elaine, Sister Lorraine, Sister Roslyn, Sister Lula, Sister uh, Erlene, and Brother Cecil. Please continue to pray, be in prayer for our entire church, Glen Haven Church family, our Glenwood community, our city, our state, our country, and our world. Also, please continue to be in prayer for people all around the world who are in need and for peace and righteousness in our government. These are our announcements. Amen. 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 Now it's time for us to continue with our praise and worship as we go to our affirmation of faith. It's found on page 881 in your red hymn book, but it's also on the screen. If you're able to stand, please stand. Let's recite what we believe in as followers of Jesus Christ. What we believe in as followers of Jesus Christ. As we re recite it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Thank you, Dr. Polk. Thank you very much. I was always taught growing up, Sister Erlene, to say thank you. That's what my grandmother taught me, to say thank you. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. It's already been said about what you did on yesterday. But the thing about it, there were people I called, and, and, and I'm going and I'm to say thank you to them. I called Jesse, and I called Jonathan. They said they would come out and help lift the Thanksgiving boxes. I want to say thank you. Because you could have said no, but thank you. I want to say thank you to Sister uh, Natasha, Yolanda, and Sister Joan Hazelwood. They came out, and they stacked the boxes. I want to say 
thank you. I want to say thank you to all those who gave money to feedback. And Sister Roslyn, who the outreach chair, gave me feedback and knowledge of what things need to be bought. And all those that gave money each and every first Sunday, that money goes toward the community. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you and those on the live stream. Thank you to the men of Glen Haven that participate and support it. I just want to say thank you. It does my heart really warm to know that this is a powerful, loving, working church. I want to say thank you. It's because it goes without saying. It goes to show you that um, one person is no show. It takes a group of people. And it's always nice to know that the pastor don't have to be around always to initiate stuff because the church is still the church. And with that being said, as we go into prayer, I want to solicit your prayers for the church. As I was in an annual conference, there are a lot of things going on. There are a lot of churches being closed. There are a lot of churches um, making decisions about the Methodist church, whether they want to stay Methodist or not. But I, I solicit your prayers to the Methodist church on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Deese, our superintendent, uh, Reverend Dr. Byron Thomas. There's a lot of things going on in the churches not just Methodist, but Baptist, and all um, different types of churches or different type of faith. But there's a lot going on, but we know that the devil is a lie. Because the enemy wants to stop God's people and believe that nothing good can come out of this. Mm -hmm. So continue to be in prayer for yourselves and the church, um, your family, your friends. Be in prayer that no weapon form will prosper. With that being said, I'm thankful. I'm thankful and grateful for this time of this day of worship as well. But also, uh, I'm thankful. It's good to see you, friends. Sister Earlene's back in the house. Um, um, she got her arm in a sleeve, but guess what? I know you're still holding on to God's unchanging hand. Thank you for coming out. You could have stayed home. Um, I thank God for Sister Joanne's mom being healed, that God is working um, in the healing process that made her whole and healthy. Um, I went on the line by myself. Natasha was on the line. Joanne was on the line. And um, God is in moving in mighty ways. Um, but they said that a church that prays together, what? Stays together. And we're supposed to be praying for one another. If you're going through something, let somebody know. I don't know everything. If I don't know it, I can't pray for you. Can I, Paula? But guess what? Every morning at 5 o'clock, Brother Al, I'm praying. I get a text message from Sister um, Joan Hazelwood about um, the devotional. I'm praying and reading that devotional. So bottom line is let somebody know that you're going through. Ross, ain't that right? I, I won't know. Paula, I'm glad to see you back on the men's. God been healing you. I know you ain't been feeling good, but I thank God that God is healing you. And there are many names that you see on the prayer list that's being mindful. Brother Cecil want me to, you want to say? Brother Cecil definitely want me to tell you, please give him a call. Please say hello. You should have an uh, address, this Natasha, right? You should have an address. He wants you to come by and visit. You know, I'm, I ain't had a chance, but I'm going to go back, run by and say see, hello to my friend, see how you're doing. But be mindful of all these people on the prayer list as well. Um, did you have something to say? A praise report, financial praise report. Okay, go ahead. Listen, everybody, I know we're always praising God, and we're always asking for everything, and we just trust. And I know we all are going through some financial things, family included. But sometimes it's just, I think it's good to let folk know that God still remembers to answer some financial pray prayers, too. Make a long story short without going into detail. With all of these school things I've been through and the degrees and all of that, my student loan bill is like ridiculous. And make a long story short, after COVID, COVID, and it was time for me to start paying this stuff back, I got a message that said I owed like six thousand something dollars. Now, no, 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 no what, I'm, what I'm saying is that was like that was that was for that month. That was for that month. It was like because I had some back 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 do stuff and some current do stuff. And they were looking for a check for six thousand something dollars that month, and then three thousand the next month, and three thousand. I make a long story short. I God told me what to do, and for the next twelve months, I owe zero dollars and zero cents. That's a blessing right there. That's a blessing right there. <laughs> that is a blessing. If you ever been to school, I know about those students' loans. 
Um, 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 we understand about those loans, don't you, Dr. Austin? But I know you don't have to worry about that. But man, those through the loan is nothing to play with. And they will come and take whatever they got to take from you. They will too as well. So let, but let's be mindful of what's going on in the world. Um, the war is still going on. Be mindful of things that are happening. Uh, we need to be praying for our loved ones this time of season. This is a difficult season, especially when the holidays roll around. It gets difficult for those who are um, feeling lonely, um, that they feel that nobody's um, there with them. But I, I, I do believe that God said he's always with you, even until the end. He's the great Emmanuel, which means that God is what? With us. God is with us, even in our ups, even in our downs. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go to God in prayer, and uh, we're going to thank God for what God has done. So let us pray. All-powerful and all-knowing God, we humbly come before your throne of grace this morning. We appreciate you for what you are and who you are and the things that you have done for us. But God, we thank you so much for the gift of life. We thank you for a good portion of health and strength, the blood that's running warm in our veins. God, we thank you, dear God, for watching over us last night, protecting us from dangers seen and unseen. We thank you, dear God, that you are always with us God, we pray right now, dear God, for those on the Glen Haven list, dear God. We pray for Brother Teddy and Sister Turner and Sister Lorraine and Sister Ross and Little Rivers. And we thank you for the healing process of Sister Erlene. And we thank you for the healing process of Brother Cecil. We thank you for the healing process of Sister Joan, um, Joanne's mother, God. God, we know that you are a healer. And we already know that you are the great physician. And we thank you, dear God, for going into the hospital and touching your people, dear God, and touching them at the top of their head and let the healing power flow through the sole of their feet, God. We thank you for the restoration. We thank you for the rejuvenation. We thank you for the renewal of the bodies, dear God. God, we thank you, dear God, that even though that uh, we go to the hospital, dear God, even though we thank you for the medication, that um, we're prescribing, dear God, but you still are the one that has the ultimate healing power, God. Because you come down on high and you lay your hand on each and every one, dear God, that need a touch from you, God. God, we are thanking you right now for the miracles in people's life. We thank you, dear God, for the healing in people's life. We thank you, dear God, for all the blessings, dear God, in our life. We thank you, dear God, that you have allow Dr. Polk to, um, the student loan to be zero, God, and that you have blessed the finances of his home, God. We thank you for blessing the finances of each and every one home right now, God. Because, God, you already said that you will provide just what they need according to their riches and glory, God, so we already know that you are the great provider, God. God, we choose today not to carry negative thoughts. We choose today to believe in you, dear God. We choose today, dear God, to look to the hills from where our help come from. Our help come from you, God, who created the heavens and the earth, God. God, we thank you for the Thanksgiving baskets, God. We thank you for those that um, participated in the Thanksgiving baskets, sharing and carrying on last weekend, God. We thank you for everyone that played a part in it, dear God. We thank you for their souls and their hearts, dear God. We thank you that they did it for a labor of love. They did it because they love you, and they love the people in this community, God. God, we pray for the churches all over the world. We pray, dear God, that you would continue to bless the churches with unity and love, that you would strengthen your church, dear God. God, we know that the gates of hell would not prevail against your church. Because as long as Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the church has a promised future, God. And so, God, we thank you for the blessings of your church, God. We thank you for the blessings of your congregation and the church leaders, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for what you are doing right now. 
So God, we ask you to help us continue to keep our eyes fixed on you. And God, we pray for each and every family this holiday weekend, those that are traveling to and fro, God. We pray for travel mercies for everyone that's traveling. Tra be with them, God. Be that um, driver in the car seat with them, God. Surround them with your hedge of protection. Dispatch protecting angels inside the car, around the car, wherever they be, dear God. And when they go visit a family member, when they go visit a friend, God, you meet them right there, dear God. And then when they come back, dear God, you travel on the road with them and meet them back at home, God. So, God, we thank you for the protection that those are traveling over this holiday time, God. But, God, help us one thing that we need to do to help us to share our witness and love to someone else that needs to know about Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. And, God, we pray also that you would Grant comfort for those who are feeling lonely tonight. Lonely this morning or lonely anytime, God. God, we pray to you, God, that you would be with those family members and let them know that they are not alone. And God, we pray that you would send a message to them, dear God, a, a message of love through a text message, um, through a phone call, or through a visit, dear God. Be with your friends and your loved ones, dear God. They are not lonely. They're just in a moment of quietness. And God, you always with them. And so God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. Bless us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We thank you for that, God. Let us continue to worship God through the worship through giving. Uh, the songwriter says, you can never beat God's giving no matter what how hard you try because God is always in the blessing business. As the usher come forward, let's prepare our hearts and minds to give back to God, which rightfully belongs to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the giver and we thank you for those that could not give God. We ask you to continue to bless everyone, the giver and those that cannot give. We ask you to bless people all over the world, God. And God, we thank you for this offering for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand if you're able. of toil and snares 
It's time for the reading of the Word of God from the Old Testament, the book of Habakkuk, the New Testament, Matthew 25. So the Yolanda, so the John Hazelwood will come forward and read the message from God as you continue to stand. If you are able, if you are able, I will understand. If you are able. Chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, and then chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And so Habakkuk 1 in says, the pro, it's the prophet's complaint. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and will you not listen? Or cry to your violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. And then Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19 says, Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, through, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God of the Lord is my strength. He makes me feel, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes, my, and makes me tread upon the heights to the leader with stringed instruments. The, the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. The parable of the talents. And it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. 
Then the one who had the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have vest, invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to one with the ten talents, for to all those who have, more will be given, and they that have, an ab and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for the worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Our song of preparation today is hymn number 694. If you're able to find it. Number 694 in your hymnals.
shall take the harvest home from the field shall in that day all offenses purge away giving angels charge at last in the fires the tears to cast but the fruitful ears to store in the garner evermore even so Lord quickly come bring thy final harvest home gather thou thy people in free from sorrow free from sin there forever purified in thy presence to abide come with all thine angels come come to raise the harvest Receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful selection. You've already heard from the scriptures this morning from the book of Habakkuk as well as the Gospel of Matthew. I would like to add another text for the sermonic moment this morning. It will be coming from the New Testament, one of Paul's writing. It will be from 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Thank you, Dan. I guess I can close my Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. And Paul put pen to paper and said, give thanks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In all circumstances, get, 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 get that, all circumstances. For this is the will of God. Now get that, get that down. The will of God. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. So this morning, after we have listened to the music, we pray that God will speak to us through the mute message. The title of the sermon this morning morning would be being thankful in difficult times. Being thankful in difficult times. Will you please pray with me? Father, I pray the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. God, you're my strength, you're my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit fall fresh and let your words fall on fertile ground over the live stream and in the sanctuary as well. Speak to me, through me, God, as I decrease, as the Holy Spirit increase. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Being thankful in difficult times. You know, Thanksgiving should be a constant practice for the believer. Especially when things get tough. Gratitude comes easy when everything is going well, isn't it? When everything's going well, everything's all right. When you, got, when, you, when you got money in your pocket, you got some green in your pocket. It's going well. When you got plenty of food in the pantry, it's going well. Got a good job, it's going well. But what about when things begin to not go so well, when your money is funny and your change is showing up strange? What about when your health is not what it should be? What about when a family situation is not what it should be? What about you having a hard time on that job and that employer is giving you such a hard time? What about when you're driving down the street, Ubering, and, and those people don't want to pay you what you deserve when you're driving them around? Or they disrespectful? What about when, oh, when things are going to hell in a handbasket? 
Are you able to thank God during difficult times? In the book of Habakkuk, it begins by this prophet crying. It's really a, a, a song, really. It's really a, 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 a song that um, Habakkuk is singing. He's singing to God, and he's wondering, God, why are you letting me see all these terrible things happen to my people? In other words, these people are um, were going through a difficult time, and um, they were being treated with disrespect. In other words, he saw violence and stealing and hurting and fighting he saw all kinds of things. He saw the evil that comes out of people that kind of um, are supposed to be on top, the wealthy. He saw how um, good people treating, so, so to speak, good people treating um, God's people with evilness. He saw all this Habakkuk. Some people said that the name Habakkuk means wrestling. There are different types of interpretation between Hebrew and Greek. In other words, when I'm looking at the Hebrew translation, it means Habakkuk means wrestling. In other words, Habakkuk was like Jacob. He was wrestling with what he was seeing. Have you ever been in a situation where you were wrestling with things that are going on in your life? When things are not right with your life, when things are not um, just not what they're supposed to be, and you ask these questions, why, Lord? Why, why, why? Do we ever ask that? Have you ever been in a situation you had to ask why? Why my husband don't treat me right? Why my wife don't treat me right? Why church folks don't treat me right? Why my, fun is, my money situation is not quite right? Why, Brother Al, why? Habakkuk was going through this difficulty, and he was seeing what was going on, and he was like, Lord, I just can't take it no more, but I'm praying to you, praying to you, why is this happening in my life? But I guess he didn't get a chance to Read Paul's writing when he says that give thanks in everything. Not some things, but all things, because this is the will of God. But nobody wants to give thanks when things are going wrong. We want to cry, we want to pout, we want to get upset. Give thanks in all things. But I submit to you, being thankful Reminds us, reminds us of our continual dependence upon the Lord. Being thankful reminds us that we are, should be dependent on the Lord. In other words, the writer of Proverbs 3 and 5 stated very well, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not what? Lean on my own understanding. The problem is that we forget to trust God and we lean on what we see. We think, as I said last Sunday, before we think. Because we look at what we see because things not going right, Roz. We forgot about our dependence on God. We depend upon God for every breath we take. Every, we should be depending on God with that. But when adversity comes, what it does is it, it, it really shows us who we really are. Adversity showed, uh, shows us our weakness and drives, it should drive us to the Lord. We must be reminded that our utter dependence upon God for all things can sometimes come in the midst of difficulties. In other words, a writer, Eric Raymond, speaks about this idea in Psalms 103, 13 through 4. He said that God knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. In other words, he was saying that I tend to have much higher and a more inflated opinion about myself in reality. In other words, I deserve to be treated better and I deserve to act better, but sometimes I don't do better because I don't depend on God. In other words, it's just like a, a four-year-old kid who thinks they can pick up a 50-pound air condition from a truck. But God is under no illusion that he knows our frame. Sometimes that he knows that we're just like little children. And sometimes we act like children when things don't go our way. We cry, we pant, we be all upset about everything else. But the problem was, instead of throwing a tantrum, we should be depending on God. 
I don't know about you. I don't know if you've been in a situation like that. I've been in a situation like that, Tiffany, where I've thrown tantrums and forgot about my dependence on God, and I started looking at everything else around me instead of looking up to heaven for all my help comes from. I had to be thankful that and remind myself that I have to depend on God and to trust in God in all circumstances. The problem is I got to stop thinking and start thinking. Because when I give thanks in all circumstances, guess what, Paula? I, ain't, I can't worry about all this mess in this world. I can't. Thankfulness also displaces anxiety with peace. The Greek word for peace means to bind together. And when we keep thanking the Lord, and when we keep our focus on God, our sorrows, our loss, our headaches begin to melt. In other words, we begin to be filled with his peace and all of our anxiety begins to move out. The pain and difficulty, it may, it may remain. You, you, you know you got just a little pain in your body, Rod. It may, it may be there, but guess what? I'm still thinking, but I'm thinking. In other words, like Paul says, he will give you peace that surpasses what? All understanding. The problem is we don't understand that God is an all-powerful God, all-knowing God, and he can do anything but fail. Being on that phone with Joanne, Natasha, and I could hear it. I, I, I was almost asleep in the bed preparing for um, annual conference, and, and I was dozing and and the phone rang, and I picked it up, and Natasha was on the phone, and, and I, Joanne was on the phone. I could hear her voice, and I could hear the anxiety. And I refuse to let a child of God be upset because I know who they are and whose they are. And we got on there and prayed a few little words to the Joan Hazelwood, but God showed up on that phone, and, and her consciousness began to change. Her anxiety began to change, and she began to have that peace that surpasses all understanding. Sometimes we need to stop thinking and start thinking. We're always thinking about this. We're always thinking about that. Guilty. Always thinking about this, thinking about that. How I'm going to pay this bill? How I'm going to feed my five children? But when I began to thank God for them romaine noodles, them black-eyed peas, and them white rice, and that's all we had. We didn't have no fried chicken. We, steak, what that mean? Sometimes we only had Viena sausage and south meat. Oh, do we have some south meat? Oh, well, I don't know. What, that, was, that was spam. But I know my children didn't eat that. But I thank God for what we had. Because I had peace that surpasses all understanding. But sometimes, sometimes we need to get connected with a few faith-filled folks. Sometimes it's okay to make a phone call and I can call Sister Maureen. Sister Maureen, I'm having a hard time today. Could you pray for me? You know, I can, I can, call, I can call Sister Erlene and tell Erlene that, you know, Erlene, I'm going through something. You know, I'm having problems with my ears, you know. But she might can just say, well, Pastor, you'll be all right. Sometimes... You need to do this and you need to do that. You know, and then and, 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 and end of the day, Roz, some I would say, well, honey, child, just pray about it. Pray about it. The problem is we need to keep our mind on the Lord. I'm reminded of a song, he will keep you in what? Perfect peace. If you what? Keep your mind stayed on what? Him. Stop thinking and start thinking. He will keep you in perfect peace. I don't know about you. Don't you want peace today? Don't you want peace for a family member? Don't you want peace with a loved one? But stop thinking and start thinking. Re keep, let the thankfulness displaces the anxiety with peace. Thanksgiving, when, you, when, you're, when you're thankful in difficult times, Thanks, being thankful, we should focus all of our attention on God rather than our circumstances. 
if we fix our eyes on our difficulty, the pain becomes sometimes unbearable. But the problem is, again, if we continue to thank God in all circumstances, then we are focused completely on the heavenly and not the earthly. Some people would say, well, some people are so heavenly bound, they are earthly no good. Well, you know what? Let me be earthly no good because I'd rather be heavenly bound because when I'm heavenly bound, I don't stop thinking about all the stuff that's going on around me. You know, I, I, I stopped kind of watching the news because I see all that stuff on the news. The war here, the war there, somebody shooting this, somebody shot that. And then when I hear a baby getting killed, that, that really brings me down, you know, and I, and I hate that. But sometimes, all I can do sometimes is watch the TV and put my hands in the TV and say, Lord, I thank you, be with them. Lord, I thank you, help them, God. Lord, I thank you, bless them, dear God. And when we continue to keep our mind full of gratitude and attitude, we're reminded of what we know that God can do. What we're reminded of the certainty of God that we are not alone, that God is with us, that he loves us, that the Lord walked with us and he talked with us, that God will bring something beautiful out of ashes. That God will turn this experience into something profitable and special. But I'm reminded of what Paul said again. Paul had some good stuff. A lot of people don't like to listen to Brother Paul. Paul had some good stuff. I'm reminded of what Paul said, um, June in uh, Romans 8 and 28 said that. And we know that all things work together for the good, for those who what? Love the Lord and who are what? Called according to his purpose. <laughs> Notice he said, give thanks in all things. You get that? Paul said, give thanks in all things. But he also says, all things work together. The problem is, some things you don't need to be going together with. You're not, you don't need to be connected with everything. But when all things work together, all things should be working together for the good. That means that if you love the Lord and you're on the Lord's side, all things work together for you. Whether you're not feeling good, it works together for the good. Family not right, it works together for the good. Financial situation not right, it works together for the good. The job situation, it works together for the good. Eventually, God will give, give, give you another job anyway, won't he, Paula? Give you another job. God works in all things, not just isolated things. He works in all things for the good. This does not mean that all things that's bad happen to you is good. No, nothing bad should be able to be good for you. But even in the bad situation, God can still make something good come out of that. Our painful experience should be a experience of grateful response. And our struggles should be a one of grateful response. In other words, when you're going through something, when you're struggling with something, this is the time for you to take that moment in your life and tell somebody about the miracle and make that miracle your message. In other words, when you're going through something, Take the miracle that God has for you, Roz, and make that miracle your message. Because we are supposed to be what? Witnesses in all the world. Now, you might not be witnesses in, in other countries, but you can be a witness on your job, a witness in your home, a witness in the church. Y'all did a witness in the community yesterday. Be a witness. Having an attitude of gratitude, though. Gratitude, what it does, you know what we're thinking? Thankfulness and gratitude, it energizes us physically. It energizes us emotionally and spiritually, even in difficult times. Pain, trouble, disappointment, yes, these things do come. But when you're on the Lord's side, and when you believe that all things work together for the good, when you believe that you can be thankful in all circumstances, the rest don't even matter. I've always reminded of good old-fashioned songs, Jesse. I'm always reminded of good old-fashioned songs. I used to hear, I, I can only tell stories about my grandmother and mother, brother, after that's, that's, those are the stories I know, you know. I know some church stories, too, you know, but I tend to put them on the back burner sometimes. But I, I, I like 
the song that they used to sing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Uh, he'd keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. But I'm reminded of a good song that um, Sister Dottie People would sing. And that song has always carried me through, Jesse. I remind that song, said, this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose, I didn't what? Have no doubt. Then she goes on to say, I, I, I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord, he will provide for me. And guess what? He will guide me what? All the way. Yes, all the way. When I woke up this morning, I had no doubt. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt that I got a chance to see my grandbaby this morning. Praise the Lord. I got to see my lovely wife this morning. Praise the Lord. I got to um, um, see my daughter. Praise the Lord. Guess what? I got to come to Glen Haven. Praise the Lord. I had no doubt when I woke up this morning. But I want to suggest to you this. She also says, I woke up with the Holy Ghost on my mind. I didn't have no doubt. In other words, when you wake up, after you done tarried for a little while, you, we know what tarried means, after you done prayed for a little while with God, do you, do, when you get up, do, what's the first thing you say when you wake up in the morning? Do you say thank you? When you're able to put two feet on the floor and after your sister my ring, you sometimes you gotta, I gotta, I gotta sit up on the bed and put my feet on the floor and say, okay, here we go. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, you know, you see what I'm saying? I, 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 I had morning, Sister Erlene, I would, for real, wake up uh, with this vertigo working and being dizzy, and I'm like, Lord, I thank you, I can walk straight. And half of you don't know, half of you don't know, Sister Erlene, know, half of you don't know, half of the time I'm up here going through a vertigo moment. Because if I look up too long, things begin to spin. But the problem is they say it was something going on in my ears. But I feel good today because I woke up this morning and I had no doubt. And I begin to realize I pray to God through the power of the Holy Spirit every morning. I believe that I'm thankful even in my difficult times. And could you please put, put back up 1 Thessalonians 5? Could you put that back up? It says that, he said, what did he say? To give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God. Because when you give thanks in all circumstances, God don't want nothing bad to happen to you. No, God is not that kind of a God. God is a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a sharing God. But when you give thanks to God in all circumstances, what you have done is move all of that circumstantial stuff out of your way. We got to stop thinking so much and start thinking. You, you, you might need to think before you eat all that turkey and cranberry sauce and potato salad. You might, think about, you, might think, you might want to think a little bit when you put too much um, all the soda pops and all that tea in your system. You might want to think about that health-wise. But you need to start thinking and start thanking. No onions. Cut back on the cranberry sauce. Because I guarantee you, watch how many people rush to the table and don't say, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. Amen. I te we teach my grandson to put his baby's hands together right before he eats, Sister Maureen. Raise a child up in the way they should go. When they grow old, they will not grow apart. That the problem is that we are thinking too much for ourselves, and we don't raise our children up enough. Our children, it's okay to let them have a good time on Thanksgiving, but you need to start letting them think about the Lord and all the goodness that God has given them. If you got a roof over your head, you should be thanking. If you got clothes on your back, you should be thanking. If you got a good portion of health, you should be thanking. But we need to stop thinking and start thanking God. Because God has been too good to me not to say thank you. Just again, I'm, I'm serious about that getting up off the side of the bed, Sister Maureen, getting up off the side of that bed, trying to plant my two feet on the ground. I'm, I'm serious about that. <laughs> and then also, let me put it this way. When you're going through stuff in your mind, you think too much, find your prayer partner, find somebody to talk to. When I can't, you know, uh, 
talk to Danny, and she's busy with her work. I can't talk to her all the time. I find another person to talk to. I call uh, Dr. Roz over there. I call her and talk to her, and we talk and share some things, you know. And find your prayer partner. Find somebody you need to talk to. Don't go through this world worried about this and worried about that. Stop worrying, because worrying don't do nothing but kill. And it's stress. Stop thinking, start thanking God. And we need to teach our children to thank God for everything that we have because everything comes from God. So as I close, remember, give thanks in all circumstances because this is the will of God. And I guarantee you, if you stayed in the will of God, the rest of the stuff won't even matter. Someone once told me, don't stress the mess. I had to learn to do that, Paula. Whew, Lord Jesus, I had to do that. And the thing about it, again, I'm going to say it seriously, pray for our denomination. We need to stop stressing the mess. I was in the middle of the annual conference and this young lady comes up to me and, and she says, is this supposed to be this way? I don't even know her. Is this supposed to be this way? There's so much going on and hurt for feeling, hurt pain. And I said, well, honey, come on up. And another friend came up and Danny picked the right time to come up. And the Bible says, well, two or three gathered that God is in the majority. Out of all them hundreds of people around us, we rat smack in the middle of annual conference fellowship hall. And I laid my hand on that young lady and I prayed for her and asked God to quiet her spirit because she was upset at what's going on in the church situation. Man, I'm not gonna go into detail, every detail. If you wanna know details about it, well, I, hey, give Natasha a shout out and I'll send it out to you, we'll, we'll go from there. But the bottom line is, it's our job to continue to do the work of God. Continue to serve turkeys. Continue to give clothing out in the clothing closet. Give what you can. Continue to play the music to the glory of God. Continue to sing to the glory of God. Continue to serve to the glory of God. Continue to do media to the glory of God. Continue to do whatever you can to the glory of God. Because in the story, the five talents, you don't want God to say, um, I know you're not. You don't want that, do you? Because when you love God, you're going to do anything. Do it anyway. Now you cannot, let's get it straight. You know you can't work your way into heaven, right? We can't do that. But guess what? Jesus does require that. Who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my sister, my brother? Those who do what? The will of God. Helping somebody. That's what it's all about, helping. And you don't want God to say, I know you're not. But I'm quite sure God is a loving God. He would never say that. But we need to be doing something. Continue to do something. And remember, God, all things work together for the good and do something no matter what. I don't care what people tell you. For this is the will of God. It's not my will. It's not the bishop's will. It's not the superintendent's will. It's who will? God, will of God. So as you do it, do it as a labor of love. Let us pray. God, I thank you for this moment in time. God, help us learn to stop thinking so much and start thanking you. Help us learn, dear God, to love one another. Help us learn, dear God, as we go through this Thanksgiving holiday, dear God, that you would bless us to allow us to be a witness to somebody in our families. While we're sitting around there um, eating that turkey, guzzling down tea and soda, eating all this um, cake and pie, God, help us learn, dear God, to lay up some sweetness of Jesus on somebody. God, help us to be a light on Thanksgiving Day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The invitation to Christian discipleship is extended to you. There may be someone in this church just that does not have a church home. You're in the right place at the right time. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Church is Right. In other words, come on down. Jesus loved you this I know. Because the Bible, what? Tells me so. I'm not making light. We, we can't have fun in God's house. What can we have fun with? But I'm serious about giving your life to Christ now. 
here's your chance to come down here. I'll meet you halfway and to join this church and join together with a loving, caring church. And as we listen to the song for the music ministry, there may be someone here today who would like to join this household of faith. Is there one? The song without a set. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Watch this. Hallelujah. 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 That's all it is. Say, woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pick it up. Walking and talking with my mind, my mind was stayed on Jesus. Walking, walking and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus, stayed on Jesus. Walking and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind my mind was stayed on jesus yes i woke up this morning with my mind stayed on jesus yes i woke up this morning with my mind stayed on jesus can we modulate that one time hallelujah hallelujah woke up this morning my mind we're gonna stay there stay on jesus yes i woke up this morning with my mind stayed on the lord woke up this morning with my mind here we go stay on jesus hallelujah 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 amen amen praise god in this place for great things that God is doing in our lives. Thank you, each and every one of you, for taking the time out to come to this wonderful Sunday of thanking God. It's my prayer that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, that you enjoy yourself, that you relax, enjoy family members and friends, to rekindle um, stories and teaching your children what it means to love the Lord. I'd like to thank Dr. Polk. Uh, for what he has done, uh, worship leader. Thank God for our music ministry. Thank God for Jonathan. Let's give God a yeah. for Jonathan. He always standing in the gap. Um, David right there with him, but thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Young man. Young, let's thank God for him. We're a young man in the church. When young men don't come to church, you're a young man in the church. Can I say something about him real quick? I found out from this young man. The first day he ever walked up here and sat down at these, at these places, he had never played a drum before. And with a matter of days, a matter of weeks, I don't even see him as a distraction or anything. Yeah. He's up here fitting in. So just thank you for your willing heart. Amen. I thank can't you play. for your willing heart. I'm not going to try. I can't play drums. I'm not going to try. Thank God for our media ministry. Thank God for them, uh, Yolanda and Dan, and what they do in the media. Thank God for our ushers. Thank you, Natasha, to Joan Hazelwood. Uh, thank you. For Brooke, y'all serving the hot coffee and tea. Of course, I never got my tea, but that's all right. I take my tea bag with me on the way out. Um, but thank God for each and every one of you. Um, I appreciate you. I love you. I just pray you have a wonderful time. As the acolyte come, as we prepare to leave this place, but never the presence of God as we stand. And through your Christ be shalom. Christ be your shalom. Shalom to you. Shalom to you now. Shalom.
Shalom, my friends. May God's dear mercies bless you, my friends. In all your living and through your loving, Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom. Let us say the benediction. May the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ rest in the body of you all. May God bless you as you leave this place, but never ever the presence of God. May God protect your family. Continue to learn to love one another. Continue to remember that all things work together for those that love God. Continue to know that even in the midst of difficulty and adversity, God is still in the blessing business. Go in love. Go in God's grace. Amen. In all your living and through your loving, Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom in all your living and through your loving Christ be your shalom Christ be your shalom have a blessed week